Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite show, The Daily Crypto News, which is always myself, Bobbin. I got my brother with me, Mr. Scott Tripp, a.k.a. The Crypto Beast. As you guys know, one of the admins over here, at big one, also one of the guys that delivers this news to you. And on the other side of the mic is my brother, Scott. And before we get started, I'll let him tell you guys a little bit more about himself. Of course, part of Big One, uh, part of Asia Blockchain Community. Excited to be here. Uh, do the social media for Big One. And, you know, it's Monday again, start of a new week. Excited to see where everything's going. So be standing by watching. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> I think uh, people are getting to the point now that uh, maybe they're not watching anymore, right? Like, I think, you know, the sentiment has been kind of down. People are... Um, and if they are watching, I, I would encourage if you're an emotional watcher, like in the, the, the down times or the, the retest bother you, um, maybe just, you know, maybe listen rather than uh, watch the charts. Maybe listen to some crypto groups, uh, you know, maybe maybe do some educating yourself on on some other uh, topics or some other uh, projects that are, are coming out in crypto. And that's one of the advantages I would say I love to do uh, the, the news with you, bro, is because we get a chance to go through and, and see what companies are building. Um, and here's the funny thing about it, if it's a bull market or or a bear market, uh, the good projects are never stop building. They're gonna continue to build. Um, and when it's time for them to put out their stuff, they're gonna do it and they're gonna market well and do it well as well, so. Oh, that's it, yeah. I think it's a really, uh, you know, it's bullish times ahead for, um, for projects who really have utility because now they don't have to worry about yelling all over twitter or yelling all over social media and, and you know reddit to uh to have interaction with their guests they can just sit back and build and then just put their utility out and then when people use it they can start back marketing them again right and it's like free marketing because they're the people who's using it going to market it for them um so i think that was i think that's one of the big things um but um before i mean without further ado we'll go ahead and jump into my first article today and this is actually coming from Bitcoin.com. Uh, and the headline reads, direct fiat on-ramps come to Algorand, aka Algo, uh, via the Alchemy Pay uh, chain. So uh, Algorand is the layer one blockchain for decentralized and traditional finance, has added a direct fiat um, channel, I mean, has added direct fiat payment channel into their network, uh, thanks to the Alchemy uh, Pay. Alchemy Pay is a payment solutions provider that connects fiat and crypto uh, economies and its global merchant network now supports Algorand's token for payment in 65 countries. Algorand also announced it has joined the Blockchain Infrastructure Alliance, which is an, has uh, which was inaugurated in October by Alchemy Pay, Neo, Near, and Polygon. So um, <clears throat> looks like they're going to be using fiat payment systems like Visa, Mastercard and PayPal, and that's what's going to give them access to be able to go into these other countries and be able to get into 65 countries and onboard fiat into their cryptocurrency or, or offboard it. So I think this is a really big move for uh, Algorand. Um, and the uh, Alchemy CEO says our payment network gives Algo broad use as a currency globally. Like us, Algorand is focused on the evolution of de decentralized finance, and we're happy to be helping Algorand use uh users move seamlessly between blockchain and non-blockchain economies so this is really big man i, I think as we we get into web3 and you, you start seeing um you know people develop on web3 i think you will you will see how this helps because you have paid uh developers in all these countries right and maybe they don't they don't develop for certain brands because they don't they don't want to take that currency because it's hard for them to offboard that currency in their country uh, especially if crypto is illegal in their country, right? Um, so this is just another way for people to be able to take fiat, go and get cryptocurrency, or take current cryptocurrency and go get fiat. So I'm happy. I like I like I like news like this. Yeah, definitely. It sounds really good. Uh, my first article is this one. I found this kind of interesting. It's on Coin Telegraph. Billionaire investor Bill Meyer Miller puts fifty percent of net worth in Bitcoin. Uh, investor Bill Miller is betting <laughs> on big, big on Bitcoin, allocating 50% of his personal net worth to BTC and related equity. He's bullish on Bitcoin despite the cryptocurrency touching down 
a multi-month low below 40,000 in early January 2022. And it just says here, uh, Miller no longer considers himself a Bitcoin observer, but rather a real Bitcoin whale, or bull, sorry, I always say whale, but as he said in a wealth track interview, and he just basically said he's invested in Michael Saylor's micro strategy and BTC mining firm, Stronghold Digital Mining. An early Amazon investor, Miller owns almost 100% of the rest of his portfolio on Amazon, he noted. Which I got one question. What's the fastest way to become a millionaire in 2022? What would that be? Putting a billion dollars in the Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny that's very true <laughs> <laughs> no I, I think that that's just a joke right but i think uh you know um the way bitcoin is performing i i don't know you know like i don't like to sound bearish um, but you know like i think when you watch a uh, bitcoin over time um historically they've always reached a height on their on the on the wave right on on whether it be you know whatever way but on the top when they reach the top of their their uh their their top they they have a, a retest or it comes down and retests the the high from the last uh bull run or the last move that it made and right now it looks like we're going back to touch you know when we were touching the the march uh high from last year people were, that was like forty thousand, and now we're going back to test maybe what it was in december or january that year before march and that could be you know a little bit lower so, I, I mean, if he's dollar cost averaging, which I'm pretty sure he is, and he has a team that's going to be trading for him as well, I mean, he's not going to go wrong. I mean, he, it's, it's not. It's, and it goes to show that we're getting new wells. Uh, and and if, while some of the old wells are leaving Bitcoin or maybe sideline right now, it's, it's never nothing wrong with, you know, people jumping in and, and um, putting opportunities out there. I think, you know, he's, for the long road, he's going to be very well. Uh, he's going to be very well. Invested. And the way this guy buys it, it shows here, Miller bought his first Bitcoin back in 2014 when BTC was trading around 200 and then <laughs> purchased a little bit more over time when it became 500. And then he didn't invest in it again until it plummeted to 30,000 after hitting around 66,000. So this guy yeah. buys the bottom all the time. Yeah, he sounds like the bottom. See, he he knows what he's doing, and plus, uh, he he bought in twenty fourteen. He's still playing with house money. He's yeah, like, oh gonna, yeah, he's gonna be all right. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna jump into my next article. Uh, we're gonna go over to Bloomberg. Uh, Bloomberg. Uh, the the top, the headline reads: China offers digital yuan uh, at Olympics to test overseas uh, appeal. Uh, China is rolling out its digital yuan to athletes and spectators ahead of the Beijing Winter Games. The first major test of the virtual currencies appeal among foreigners. With less than a month to go before the, the kickoff, uh, the event already incub in encumbered, encumbered, yeah, encumbered uh, by the diplomatic boycotts and the threats of the virus outbreaks, China's looking to use the games to showcase the digital yuan's clout globally. Uh, so doesn't surprise me, you know, it's smart marketing to kind of go ahead and, and you know, get these people involved the football players and and um some of the spectators i think you know what they'll do is they'll use the yuan to, to pay for these uh celebrities rooms and some of their uh meals and things like that so that they can test the currency uh that won't really cost anybody anything um you know for them to be able to give out this and it's kind of you know like what cryptocurrency should be doing on a smaller scale if you think about what china's doing this is intelligent marketing in my eyes um yeah, where you can yeah. You could just give these things out and, and, you know, people take them and go spend them and you, it gives you, it gives you a volume, right? They're going to figure out how easy it is. That's the thing. Right. I think that's the idea behind it for sure. But yeah. Uh, my next one, I found this funny. I found this hilarious. I think uh, you found it interesting too. NFTs gaining, gaining popularity as fundraising method in election campaigns. So American politicians are using NFTs and crypto in increasing measure. Republican Blake Masters, who is running for Arizona senator, is offering NFTs to campaign donors. He's raised almost $575,000 by the later part of December 2021 by offering donors NFTs of artwork for a book on startups that Master co-authored. 
Uh, and then another person who's running for a house seat in California says our NFTs are campaign merchandise. She offered NFTs in 2021 to try and win the support of younger voters, by, but only raised about $6,000. So there's new people moving in and it's coming more and more all the time. It even talks about in Asian politics uh, that they're raising some of those in, in uh, South Korea. There's a presidential candidate that's issuing NFTs as well. So, I mean, there's a general movement towards using it as a tool to get votes, I think, as well, right? And then by doing that, so. I think anytime you have these uh, election times come up or the election polls come up, you always have these candidates that uh, go out and try to appeal to every community. You know, when it was like a, a gay thing uh, and, you know, they had gay pride month and, you know, you had some presidential candidates that went out and, and walked in the, and walked in these uh, parades and and went to some of these rallies. Um, and you see it, you see it all the time uh, here in the States, especially, you know, in, in some of the bigger cities. Um, and they do it for, sometimes they do it for attention. Uh, sometimes they do it for cause. Uh, and we, I guess our hopes right now are the people that are, or as the people that's investing, we're hoping they're doing it for cause, right? But yeah, exactly. just, you know, we, we hope that they're they're doing it for a good cause and, and trying to uh, get people in the cryptocurrency and and not not anything else. Uh, but I mean, we'll see. Uh, I think it's always good news to to hear the government, you know, get involved and, and you know get other countries involved and you know give give other give other countries uh, um, I guess like a uh, a green light that it's a it's okay, you know, like and everything's gonna be okay using crypto. So um, I lo- I like that article. It just you know, like I always get weary with the government sometimes just because, you know, but if they if they go into crypto, I think if governments get into cryptocurrency and trade their own cryptocurrency or a, or a currency that all of them can trade equally or, you know, because they all have these printing machines, um, <laughs> I think it'll be very fair. You know, like and I think that'll that'll be that'll yield well for everybody that's involved. Um, so my last article is actually going to be coming from Coin Telegraph, uh, and it's from Binance, so it's about Binance. It says Binance uh, sponsors with AFCON to further the development of crypto adoption in Africa. So Binance partners with the Confederation of African Football to uh, sponsor the Total Energies African Cup of Nations tournaments. So Monday marked the start of the Total Energies uh, tournament, the largest men's football championship in Africa. And at the same time, Binance Binance announced this official partnership with the football team, uh, as well as the sponsorship with the AFCON 2021 tournament itself, becoming the first crypto and blockchain sponsor for the event. So uh, that's that's amazing, man. Like Binance just can't stop, won't stop. That's the mentality I get with Binance and, and to see them, uh, you know, go into the the, the biggest uh, football, I, um, you know, football event there and, and put their name on it uh, and not only in sponsor the team, but also sponsor the tournament. It just kind of like, it just kind of says something like, hey, you know, I'm here for the support in general, not only for the football team, but as the tournament as well. Um, so I can, I, I expect this to be a good, uh, a good, a good look um, for Binance in a sense, Scott, because the type of people or the type of crowds that watch football or, or soccer, um, they're very compassionate people. Um, they're very uh, loyal to the things they love. Uh, and then you know that from watching how dedicated some of the fans are at these football events or soccer events. Um, so I think this is a, a good move. I always had said, you know, um, whatever, you know, whatever uh, crypto started getting on those soccer fields, I think, you know, God, man, soccer is an international thing. It goes across all countries. Uh, it has a lot of, it has a lot of viewers. Uh, so super smart move on Binance is uh, my hat. Mm-hmm. Um, My next article, I found this one really awesome, actually. Uh, Reminds me of kind of like the Star Trek uh, stuff, but yeah. Uh, Does Disney patent filling show there's no stopping the metaverse? Disney signals a potential stab at the metaverse by filing a virtual world simulator with the U.S. Patent Office. The concept compromises a computing platform with memory storing a software code, a tracking system linked to the computing 
pro, uh, platform in conjunction with a projection device, meaning in the not too distant future, theme park visitors may soon be exploring the metaverse via a headset list augmented reality because the idea behind this is they say that the headsets are too cumbersome and and cause too many issues they're actually getting rid of that and making it so that everyone could kind of enjoy this this metaverse space and be able to walk around in it and experience it without any kind of a headset and just being that uh projection technology which i think is amazing like imagine just strolling down and off a, uh, like a corridor or warehouse in Disneyland or Disney World and being able to see a virtual world of say even like the avatar like look around you and you can see all these cool things and different stuff happening I think it'd be pretty amazing yeah I mean and it's gonna all be done through a, a, a pair of VR glasses rather than the headsets I think I don't think are... even glasses it's all projected in front of you you don't even need oh, to wear so glasses or nothing. Okay, that's that's cool. They actually have something it's like, like a that. hologram room almost, right? Like in like how they kind of send star. But how would you get? How would you get there? You would have. I mean, how would you get there? Are they seeing a projector? Go they would take you there, and then there'd be like a projector that would project everything. So, just oh, that's gonna be really cool. That's a different idea. That's that's really cool though. Yeah. Um, I'm not surprised to see Disney get involved and, and see some of the big players get involved. You know, they're going to do life change of things. It's going to be like our metaverse expectations may have been Super Mario level and they're going to come out with like Call of Duty. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's how it's going to kind of work, right? Um, so it, it doesn't surprise me, but it's definitely always good news to hear that uh, more people are, are starting to adapt and, and, and other companies are starting to, to kind of come in and, and, and kind of like put their kind of like scratch the surface and put their foot in and plant their foot and say, Hey, I'm here. And, and we're going to bring a little bit of something different to it. Um, but before we head out of here, guys, you know, we like to kind of go over to trade and view, get a look at what's going on in the total market cap and kind of weigh out some of the dominance factors. So let me jump over here right now. And today the total crypto market cap is at one point. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. 1.92. Um, and it's down over about a half a percent. Um, over the last 24 hours, uh, it looks like, you know, we're trying to regain some support here. Use uh, uh, this, 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 this was the, the support that we had before we made the move up. Uh, I, if we don't hold here, I, I think we could go potentially a little bit lower on the uh, total market cap, um, which, you know, probably wouldn't surprise me much uh, as we talk about bringing on adoption. I think some of these numbers have to go down to kind of, you know, like I said, to, to bring in that new money. The Ethereum dominant Scott has got all the way down to 18. Um, so that is very low for Ethereum dominance. So it's a lot of room for other things to grow. And so for some reason, even though Bitcoin's falling, the Bitcoin dominance is at uh, almost 41% today. Uh, so a raise on the Bitcoin dominance and a little bit of a uh, downturn on the Ethereum dominance. I think both of these numbers uh, will continue to kind of play around in this area, consolidate and move around a little bit. Uh, nothing to be fearful of, though, guys. I think anytime there's a, even if it's not an opportunity for us right now, or for some of the people who may have invested a little bit higher, uh, there's always opportunity for a, for those people on the flip side, and there's also opportunity for a lot of new people to get involved. So even if your portfolio is making you happy, still bring in those people that you know was telling us that you know four thousand dollar Ethereum was too high. You tell them now, hey, Ethereum is almost uh, you know maybe twenty eight hundred dollars or three thousand dollars, whatever it is right now. Um, you can tell them that it's lower now. Uh, and some of these other uh, projects, we see that they're continuing to build. They're continuing to do partnerships. They're continuing to work. They're continuing to have news printed out. Um, so yeah. so it looks like projects are running. I, I don't think anything's going to happen with crypto uh, overall. I think we, even if we get a downturn, it's only going to make for a bigger spring to bounce up off of. So yeah. as always, guys, we appreciate you guys being with us. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And uh, until then, <laughs> as Sorry. always, guys, have a good one. And peace. Have a great day, you guys. It was nice talking to you.